Hello, this is Paul with Logics Workshops. Today, I'm going to answer a question that was sent to me via YouTube message about building a portfolio for a beginner. It's sort of the question, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? And you can't get a job to get experience to build a great um, portfolio if you can't get the job because you don't have a portfolio of experience. So I understand that. What I'm going to show you today, this will not be a very long video at all. What I'm going to show you today is a shortcut in the way you think and the type of projects you decide to put in your portfolio, especially when you're a beginner. Now, in addition, let me share with you, I have I get questions every single week from dozens of people um, who want me to look at their resume, who want me to share their, my opinion regarding their projects. And, and what I find is, to begin with, we've got to change in this industry, we've got to change our idea about what we're going to put in our portfolio and how we're going to present ourselves in a professional way. And I've mentioned this in several videos in the past. You've got, by all means, take the Udemy classes. By all means, take the online courses. However, if the certificates that you get there is what you're putting in your portfolio, and that's all you're putting in there, you're going to, in my opinion, you're going to do yourself more harm than good. Because it, just think of it this way, everybody's doing the exact same thing. And it's hard to compete when everybody's done the same thing. Everybody went to the same school, everybody got to about the same grades, everybody put in the same projects in their portfolio. So what's the difference? Maybe character, personality, uh, how much you're willing to take work for versus someone else. Very little difference. What you have to do is change the way you look at this situation. This is my opinion. You need to change that perception. There's what you think and what the employer needs. And we got to find a way to merge those two together. Um, the employer is not going to change. So that pretty much means you've got to change the way you think a little bit. But I'm going to help you do that today. That's my goal. It's not so much about me uh, giving you exact steps to do. I need to change the way you think and the way you look at things. Um, I will tell you this much. My belief is, if you follow this advice, you're going to have an awesome portfolio for a beginner. You're going to stand out from the crowd, and, and employers are going to really understand the way you think about programming and automation. All right? So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. Let's switch over to our screen. There's a little uh, pitch for our upcoming vision trainer training course that's uh, coming up, so I'm excited about that. All right, anyhow, let's get to our business at hand. Okay, so I'm going to bounce around here a little bit. I need to find a... Um, okay, <clears throat> um, this is the very first little video, and that's what we're going to... Okay, so we're going to take a look at this video, and... Um, this is a lot of what uh, I find people who are beginners think uh, about automation. This is what you take in your class. This is what you, you learn in your classroom. This is what you, you do in your, in your online training courses, right? So it picks up the block and it moves it, right? Okay, and it, it indexes, right? It's got a cylinder that pushes and indexes, right? Okay. This is all well and fine to understand the concept of, of industrial automation and programming, to be able to learn the very, very fundamentals. This is not the type of project you want to put in your portfolio. Let me repeat this. This is not the type of project you want to put in your portfolio. All this does is the instructor. You have to realize this is what the instructor is using to teach you, okay? The, the employer looks at this situation totally different, okay? And we'll, I'll show you what and why, all right? So let's take a look at this. This 
this is what the employer thinks. Do we see a difference here? Right? Now you say, of course, I'm just a beginner, Paul. I'm just a beginner. I, I can't, I can't do all this high tech automation. Totally not yet. I'm not there. I'm going to stop that there. Okay. I, I, I'm just not good enough yet. You're right. You're not. You're not good enough to think of the entire project and write an entire um, program. But you are, look at it this way. What I want you to do is I want you to change something here. And that is look at real world videos online. And all I did was type into YouTube, you know, automated machinery. And look at all these videos, right? That's it. That's all I did. I found some, I found a company that makes machines, and I just want to study their videos. That's it. That's all I want to do for starters. Right. Okay. Now, what I like doing is, I'm coming to see this here, this, let me go back. It's got some, some cool little indexing going here, and we basically have a workstation. Right? One part of, and you see some stuff going on in the background, one part of a much larger machine. And you'll look at, there's two, three different heads. There's a kid's camera here, right? So sensor. So we have we have a lot going on here. We have it looks like some uh, some pneumatics, right? So some suction cup pneumatics it's creating vacuum right here. With so needless to say, that's what we're doing. That's all. That's all this machine's doing, right? One station. That's what I want you to do is think of one, find one, uh, several machines and look at one station in that machine. Just one station, just like this, one station, right? So there's several things going on here, right? And that's all you want to focus on right here. One station, one little part. And if you can find something like that, then you're, you're past your first step. The second step is to thoroughly understand what's going on. Really, really, really study. Now, mind you, this is what you're going to show your employers. Take time. Spend a couple of hours studying this, this station. What you want to do is find out what is it doing. Every single minute step. And that sometimes can be difficult when you're sitting here just watching it. But do your best to figure out what is it doing? How is it doing it? What am I missing? Now, if there's a whole bunch of mechanical components to it, then it's not so much what we're interested in. We're interested in anything that's got some automated uh, elements to it. A single station here, that's a great example right here. Now, what I'm gonna help you with next is how to look at these stations, right? Now, where I'm headed, let me share this with you. Where I'm headed is you want to, you want to uniquely share with a prospective employer the way you think, okay? That's the biggest misnomer most people. They get, think they have this big complex program or, or they do the real opposite. They do such a basic little job, like the first video, and figure that that's adequate. It's not. And the reason is, employers look at things differently than you. They look at it differently than the school, okay? All right? So now in the real world, this is what they're looking at. Now all you have to do, it, here's this, here's in my, in my opinion, is a secret sauce. All you have to do is break this down. Now you can take one, just one station right here. We have several things going on if we study this, right? Okay, we've seen the Kent's indicator come on. So, so we know that when that, when that fixture turns, we have an indicator light. Okay, we also know by looking at this, it, it looks like we have air, and this, I believe, is a uh, mechanism that's used to um, create 
vacuum. So it pushes air in and creates a vacuum. So um, it, my belief is, by looking at this, that... Uh, let's go back. They're putting... They're indexing every other fixture, and they're putting these lightweight, um, this is for some sort of medical filter, these lightweight filters on there, and they're vacuuming it in order to hold it, and it must be a lightweight va a vacuum on there. And that's it. That's all we want to do. Now, here's, the, here's where I want to go with this. So begin to understand what's going on here. So we have an index, we have an air vacuum, we have a, a key in sensor, we have a cylinder uh, um, that comes down, right? We have a part, etc. Now, write the program, a, a section of the program for this. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. Save this video, make it, make a copy of it, or save the link, and write or take pictures of it, and write. The program for this particular section. Now, you don't have to do it for the whole machine. You don't have to do it for everything. You've got enough right here to keep you busy. Here's why I want to ask, ask you to think of this. What if the air is fails? There's no air, no vacuum, right? When this index comes over. Now, the sensor, the, the PLC should get a feedback that there's no air, correct? All right. What if the key in sensor doesn't see it? Right? What if when the cylinder comes down, it it you it has static electricity somehow and it picks it up and that that piece that filter is no longer there before it indexes out. Because if you notice what's happening here is it's coming down and doing something and then that white piece right there, which I assume is the filter, is still there after the cylinder comes up. But if it's gone, what is the sensor? Does the sensor uh, notice that? And I would say it does. So what you have here also, if you'll notice, that, watch this. This is really interesting here when you study this. Okay. The sensor, the can sensor was on when the cylinder was up. When the cylinder came down, the can sensor turned off. And then the key in sensor went back, goes back on when the cylinder goes back up. So what's happening here is that sensor is calibrated to that filter period, right? So if you write a section of a program, use this video as an opportunity to demonstrate to your employer what you, what you have learned. You're going to need, you can just focus on, right, write it from the perspective that the filter, what would happen if the filter is not there before it gets there? What happens when the filter is sticks at the bottom of the cylinder? What happens if the air goes up? So you could write this and do a false routine and just do the false routine of all the different things that would be there. That's it. That's it. Do an HMI that, that indicates that there's messaging for all of the faults. You could do a reset, right? So what if the, the machine crashes or, or or something on the line right so you have you have machine reset you have faults you have any kind of errors I hope you get the idea of what it is I'm trying to get how I'm trying to get you to think think differently okay this is how this is really the way it is in the real world okay so you can do this here and this is a this is there it is there's some sort of filter that feeds in so we can do the same. Here's our sensor, right? So we see our sensor right there. What if, what if it comes down? That sensor is not that the filter is not there. The sensor doesn't sense it. Uh, any of these things, the air is not on. You'll notice that the cylinder. Maybe there's. You could do. You could write a section of code that that's on the pneumatics here. The cylinders have to go completely up and completely down. We know that there's different types of cylinders. And we know that there are different sensors that go on these cylinders that indicate um, extend and retract. We could just write a we could write a routine that has nothing 
but talks about uh, that, that that is on the pneumatics for this machine. That's it. As, study this film, this film as much as or this video as much as you want. Try to identify all the different cylinders and write a cylinder routine, a, 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 a pneumatics routine, best you can. That's it. Be don't be very clear about what it is you're trying to do. Don't be random. Say I've got this section of this video and here's what I'm focused on. The pneumatics. Here's what I'm focused on. Faults. Here's what I'm focused on. Sensors and indicators. Here's what I'm top focused on. Resetting the machine. If you do that, you've got a lot to work with right there. We can do the same thing with this machine, right? So I'm looking at, love looking in deep, deep, right in, right close to where all the actions happen because that's where you're going to learn your most about what's going on. And just think about all the things that a controls engineer would have to think about. An automation engineer would have to think about. What could go right? What could go wrong? How's this supposed to be? What is the sequencing? You know, you could take this program and write it out in function block, right? Uh, versus ladder. Just a lot of different ways you can do this. My point here is this. In this video, I hope in this short little piece of time I spent with you, you can look at something and say, I can get a snapshot of that machine and write some code about some little piece in that machine. Um, right here, this is a great one also. Uh, it's got some, looks like it's got some, some, uh, may have some vacuum, may I, I it moved kind of quick, so some, some air for cylinder extensions, I'm not sure, but there's a lot going on here, and you can pick any one little piece of it. This one will be a little hard. This is what you want. You want something tight in so you can really uh, get an idea of what's going on and, and study it. And you want something that's got some stuff going on. I like this, this video because it's got a lot of different uh, close-in features. The lighting's good, and it's got a, you know, you know, different pieces of the machine, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. And right here, this is awesome. You can just watch that. Just there's your robot. You could even simulate robot inputs and outputs to your program. Um, there's just a lot you can do with just this one video. And I would recommend going around looking online at different videos of machines and writing programs with that. If you do this. You will stand out from all your competition. You will demonstrate a much higher level of thinking when it comes to uh, your your programming, and you can really demonstrate um, your your value to a company. Okay, I hope this helps. There's so much more I could go into this. I want to put this out there quickly. Uh, um, I got this question uh, last evening. I thought, you know, I've been holding off doing much on the project portfolio. I'm um, thinking about putting a training course together with different projects to help you build your portfolio. But, um, hey, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Uh, anyhow, until then, until next time, this is Paul with Logics Workshop. This should keep you guys busy for a little while. So if you have any questions, let me know. I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye.